Yo, what's up everybody and welcome back to The Beast On and what is The Beast going to opine on today? This one might throw you through a loop or for a loop. Um, you know me mostly for the sports takes, but I'm a pretty well-rounded individual and I like to venture outside of the sports. Matter of fact, I don't know if you know this, my major in college, I had a double major, was broadcasting and political science. There was a big part of me that wanted to go spend my career up in Washington. As a matter of fact, I did a summer semester at American University. Uh, got my only A plus in that semester. How about that? Uh, rocked it. Was, it. was an example for the students in that program, that special program of the kids that were invited up there. Yeah, that's, that's me. What the hell happened? My parents were like, why did you go to American and be a politician? Because I love the U and... I didn't want to shovel snow anymore. But anyways, let's get to this. Uh, first of all, before we get to even anything, don't forget, subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. All you got to do is have a YouTube account. Sign up. It's real easy. If you have a Gmail account, it's even easier. And you just click subscribe. Bingo. Bongo. Bango. You're good. Now, if you, if you want really want my content, you hit the little bell on the page, and then you get notified when there's new content up. The other thing you can do is follow me on the social media, on the Twitter, on the Instagram, at Miami Radio Beast. And thirdly, since it's Giving Tuesday, and I don't want to make this seem odd or weird. I'm not looking for handouts or charity. What I am looking to do is build an independent media empire free from the man telling me what i can say or do uh and you can help out by being one of my patrons i have a patreon page this is a way to support what i'm doing so you can go to patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash brian b-r-i-a-n the beast london and that will take you to my patreon page i'll put it in the description of this video. So let's get down to this. What is the beast on today? The beast is on Kamala Harris dropping out of the presidential elections uh, from the Democratic side in the primaries. Now, I'm just going to warn you. Uh, I don't want this to trigger anybody. I don't want this video to make anyone upset. I'm certainly not here to get engage in some uh, vitriol surrounding the world of politics today. But with my background in political science, I do want to provide a little bit of thought process um, as unbiased as possible about this move because it's a big move in the in the Democratic primary, right? So Kamala Harris drops out and she started out in that first debate with a bang and she took, uh, took out Biden and she really had a lot going for her. She's feisty. Um, I thought she would make a really good candidate um, when I saw her... Um, on TV, watching some C-SPAN and whatnot in the Senate. I thought the way that she handled herself and conducted herself in uh, conducting speeches and hearings in the Senate, I thought that would make her a good candidate. Uh, she has a pretty good uh, background and record as the Attorney General from the state of California. I thought that would also make her a good candidate. But um, she's mixed and uh, biracial. And uh, having a part African-American uh, background, her really not polling well with blacks in America, I think really hurt her chances from the get-go. Uh, and this is an odd race when it comes to that because you have Kamala Harris, she's gone. Cory Booker, also not polling well with African-Americans. Um, you have candidates like Pete Buttigieg, who have a lot of ground to make up there. Um, I'm not sure about Amy Klobuchar. She's from the Midwest, from Minnesota. It doesn't seem like she would pull well with the African-American community. Um, Elizabeth Warren is up and down. Bernie up and down. Joe Biden is still kicking ass as far as the African-American vote. But for Kamala Harris to really be down in the single digits as far as the polling goes for African-Americans really hurt her chances and her electability. Um, it just wasn't going to happen for her. So she dropped out. Now, from the get-go, from way before we even started this process of looking towards 2020, I thought, without knowing who was even going to be in, 
right? I mean, knowing Joe Biden would be in, but I'm not really having any idea who else was going to be in the race. I really thought that if there was going to be a duo that would be the most electable that could possibly uh, defeat the president, which at this point it looks like it's going to be tough despite everything going on, um, that it would be Joe Biden at the top of the ticket and Kamala Harris as his vice presidential candidate. Um, I think the country is ready for a female uh, to, to, to work their way up into the number two position, right? Um, I mean, the country was extremely close in electing a female as president. And we could go on about that forever. Uh, I won't break that one down, but, you know, Hillary tried going to some states. Just saying. Bad political strategy. And um, amongst other things. But I thought the, the most, the strongest kind of duo would be Biden and Harris. I still think that might be the case, although now I think Harris might bring down Biden, possibly, if he wins a nomination. But still look for that duo, possibly, to be out there. Um, the Democratic primary process right now is really boiling down to, 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 to one thing, which is, um, do you want a candidate that's going to be extremely progressive, a Bernie or a uh, Elizabeth Warren, or do you want someone that's going to be more center-left, like a Pete Buttigieg, Joe Biden, Amy Klobuchar? Um, and that's what you got out there. Those are pretty much the five. Um, anyone else? Cory Booker seems like he's out of it. I mean, you know, Tom Steyer, he's got all the money in the world, uh, but I don't think he's going to, you know, he can spend all the money he wants. He's not going to get elected. The interesting one is Michael Bloomberg, um, although he's got some stuff in his past as the mayor of New York to deal with. Uh, Michael Bloomberg certainly has, Bloomberg has a name recognition. He's run before, and he's got all the money in the world to spend on advertising, which he's doing. Um, so that's an interesting one to watch. I'm not sure where that goes. Uh, Deval Patrick, I don't know why he's in the race. Uh, I, for, the love, for the love of all that's holy, I can't figure that one out. Um, so that has no chance. But I really feel like this is going to come down on the Democratic side to whether the party or those that vote on the Democratic side are willing to embrace more of a progressive part of it or a center-left part of it. Now, um, as... Let's just be honest here. I will tell you where I stand politically, but this is not... The, the good thing about this country and the good thing about what I've been doing so far on the YouTube, and I've actually had people message me this, because if you follow me, you know where I stand, which is somewhere to the left of the snowflake situation. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I'm not here to, to to bring you Venezuela part two, but I'm pretty progressive, okay? But let's get that out of here for a second. We, I've had plenty of people message me and drop into my mentions and say, listen, I know where you stand. I stand completely opposite. I'm with President Trump, but I'm supporting what you're doing. And in this world, right, if we can't communicate with each other, no matter where we stand on whatever subject, then we've got a problem, right? Whether it's I'm pro Manny Diaz and you're against Manny Diaz, if we can't come together and, and you know talk about it civilly, but not get at each other's throats, then we've got a problem. So it's the same thing in politics. So you know where I stand, somewhere uh, to the left or to your left, or I don't know who's left. I, I don't know how this works. You understand. So, you know, personally, I embrace the Elizabeth Warrens of the world. I, I, I'm, Bernie's a whack job to me, but, you know, listen, if you love him, you love him, that's fine. Um, I can't stop thinking of Saturday Night Live sketches and Larry David when I, when I see him. Elizabeth Warren appeals to me, but, again, the whole Medicare for All situation, to me, is a tough program to um, not only implement without costing people money, but also tell people, hey, uh, that private insurance that you might like... Um, you got to get rid of it in order to embrace this new system. And there's all sorts of pitfalls in that. And in just reading uh, the views of a bunch of economists and how this is all going to pay for itself, I still can't make the numbers work in my own head. Um, as much as I would embrace everyone having health care um, because it benefits my personal situation of one, being unemployed and not having employer-based health care right now. Two, my son being born with massive pre-existing conditions 
I don't have to go through the whole thing, but he was uh, born prematurely, was in the NICU for a month, and then when he was one, he was uh, this close to death from respiratory failure that has carried uh, up through uh, now. And so uh, when insurance companies see his history, there's all sorts of alarms go off. But that's neither here nor there. And my wife obviously is battling with thyroid cancer. So we've got all sorts of issues in this household where a uh, public option, a Medicare for all would benefit us personally. That's us, that's not you. And I'm not here to push anything on anybody. I just know as I look at Elizabeth Warren's um, you know, points on that, I can't make the money work. So that brings us back to um, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as the duo that I think is going to be there. But there's one issue that has me a little bit um, up in the air about that, which is Joe Biden's 77. And I know that we shouldn't, I don't want to cross him out because of age. Uh, you know, we have, the president's in his 70s now. That's That's not the issue. It's just that I feel like He's on the cusp, just from watching him, of not being 1,000% there. And I'm someone that's a big believer in the President of the United States, whoever he or she is, being, uh, one, the smartest person in the room, always, and two, having full capabilities to have that intelligence and use it, right? So... Now, we, there's been plenty of times in history when we haven't had the smartest person in the room as the president. Um, but that's kind of what I look for. Can you be the smartest person in the room? Do you have the mental capability to handle that intelligence and make the best decisions for the country with that intelligence? I'm not sure Joe Biden does at this point. I can't tell. I can't tell how much of his, of, of his gaffes are, are just Joe being Joe and how much of it is because of his age. I can't tell. So the race is up in the air at this point. It's interesting to see what's going to happen at the next debate. It's going to be interesting to see once we get into uh, the, you know, the, the, the primaries. Uh, remember, uh, I was reminded of this, of this the other day. Ted Cruz won Iowa in 2016. Then President Trump came back and you know, won New Hampshire and Nevada and South Carolina. But Ted Cruz won Iowa. So we're make the, we make this big deal about Iowa, and in reality, it may not be, or sometimes isn't, or a lot of times is not, the candidate who wins Iowa that actually wins the nomination. So uh, a lot of the early states, you know, the way they've made the, the electoral calendar, um, you know, with, 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 uh, with Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, South Carolina, then a huge Super Tuesday, um, there's going to be some fast and furious things going on on the Democratic side of things. Meanwhile, the president is dealing with his own issues, but the one issue he doesn't have to deal with, I mean, yes, Bill Weld is sitting out there and God knows why, but he doesn't have to deal with a primary. Um, he's not going to get primaried. So the, the president is starting off on better ground than the Democrats because he doesn't have to go through the process that leads up to the nomination. All right. There you go. There's a, a little bit of a political-ish, if you will, on, uh, on Kamala Harris dropping out as a presidential candidate. If it's not for you, no worries. Don't watch it. Uh, you know, every video's got a title, and if there's one you don't like, you don't have to watch that one. I do it all the time, right? I watch Dr. Pimple Popper. I love lipomas. I watch the lipoma extractions. If she's got just, you know, blackheads, that's not my thing anymore. I don't watch those videos. That's okay though, right? I watch the other stuff. That's what this channel's all about. You, you can pick and choose what you wanna watch, what you're into. Just know I'm, I'm gonna bring you more than just sports. I don't want you to just be like, hey, it's the beast. If he's not talking sports, he can go to hell. No, uh, I'm gonna, if there's a big news story, if there's a big politics story, if there's big uh, whatever story, I'm gonna try to talk about it because I've got thoughts, I've got opinions, I've got hot takes. All right, that'll do it for me, don't forget. Follow me on social media, Miami Radio Beast, on Instagram and Twitter, and of course, the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Brian the Beast London. Thank you for watching. I will talk to you next time.